First of all, you need to purchase two of these from Hobby King. It's the heavy duty um, serverless retract with metal gearing. Um, there you are. Two of those. Now, you need to take these six screws out there, 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 and there. So you take the six screws out. Here we go. Okay, now separate the two halves. Okay, that's the inside workings of the serverless retract. Now you need to take a good photo of this because the next thing you're going to do is take all everything to pieces. Okay, when you pull the pieces out, here's the case. First bit you pull out is the trunnion. There it is, the trunnion. And then you pull out the motor, gearbox, PCB, all as one unit. Now, the, now you've got the whole thing separated. What you need to do next is put the two halves, the two halves of the casing, back together again. Put them back together again without anything inside. And what you did need to do now is take this away. So a good pillar drill because you want to drill these holes straight and drill the end two holes, these ones at the narrow end, all the way through with a three millimeter drill, a 3M drill. And you'll see why you need to do that in a minute. Okay, now you need to fabricate four of these out of uh, two millimeter thick um, anodized aluminium, which is what I've used, but you could use carbon fiber or ABS or glass fiber. Um, it doesn't need to take a great deal of strain, so um, it doesn't need to be all that strong. So the measurements are 18 millimeters across and 14 millimeters in width. You need to drill two three millimeter holes at the opposite corners like that and three millimeters set in um, drill or, or mill a slot which is also three millimeters wide three millimeters and you need to make four of those. There you go, one, two, three, four. Next we need to remove the pin from the trunnion. There's a five millimeter steel pin there. And we're going to replace that and that's held in with three uh, grub screws. There, there and there. So that's either side and at the top. Here we go. Loosen that one. They're quite stiff. They've got thread locking. Loosen the top one. There we go. And loosen the one on the side. There we go. So that should come out. There you go. Now that piece of um, that piece of rod you can throw away. Never see that again. We cut two bits of five millimeter studding um, and that they will be 800 millimeters long. So five millimeters diameter, 800 millimeters long. And we replace uh, the rod that we took out of the trunnion with the studding. There we go. Take it all the way in. Tighten the grub screws. I use thread, thread lock, not stud lock, because um, if you put stud lock in there, you might never ever get it undone again. Not that you need to get it undone. 
There you go. And do that for both trunnions. Now you reassemble the uh, serverless retract in the reverse order in which you took it apart. Um, place everything in the one side of the casing first and then um, put the other side of the casing back on. So you find it quite tricky um, putting back together, aligning the two case halves, but it's a whole lot easier if you make sure of one thing, and that is this little ball bearing there, which is in the housing, that is pressed firmly into the housing. If it's not, then I promise you, you'll never get it back together again. There we are then. Now it's ready for the next stage, which is to put our little fabricated plates on. Now if you've got a Tarot 680, which is what I'm using here, you should have a spare couple of bits like that, sort of U-shaped bit, um, that was used on the original um, on the original landing gear. Um, now that we're using retractable, we're going to use this bit by bolting it on to the end of the serverless retract mechanism using one of these little plates either side. Now the reason why it's got slots in it is so that you can adjust the angle. This angle at the end will be approximately the same angle uh, that your retract legs are facing outwards. Work. That then is the work that we need to do on the actual retract mechanism completed. What we need to do now is attach the retract mechanism to the hexacopter or octocopter and attach the landing gear to our 5mm stud. I'll show you how to do that next. Now that we've assembled the retract mechanism, get hold of a piece of dowel that exactly matches the internal diameter of your undercarriage leg, of the landing gear leg. So, if it doesn't fit exactly, you might have to sand it down a little bit as I did. Okay, then you drill a 5mm hole through the middle there. Thread a bolt onto the studding leg there and then you thread the doweling onto the 5mm stud. If you drill that 5mm it should just screw on nicely. Now when we've screwed the dowel onto the shaft. I've just opened up the retract to make it easier. Uh, we then put a washer on and another 5mm bolt and tighten it up so it's all nice. And then just to show you what happens next, we, we push the landing gear leg onto there and it should stop four millimeters short of that the end of the trunnion that's so that you avoid the plastic here if you want to put it all the way in then you can file away some of the plastic but I prefer not to do that um, and there you have it your landing gear um, ready to mount to the hexacopter. See how it works. There you are. Close. Open. It's a lot slower than the smaller ones because it's heavily geared. But it's very, very strong. When we've uh, attached the retract mechanism to 
the airframe. Then I'll put the uh, landing gear on and secure them using self-tapping screws. If you want to secure it at this stage, you need to drill four uh, two millimeter holes through the carbon fiber into the dowel. Wick a little bit of uh, thin CA into the hole to strengthen the dowel around the, the screw and insert the four self-tapping screws. That will stop the landing gear from rotating and also from falling off. Now we come to the part um, where we attach the retracts to the airframe. I'm assuming that you've built the airframe. Uh, everything except for the retracts. Just go there and there. Where the retracts would normally be, um, the retract uh, mounting plate would be bolted in to these four holes there. Um, we need to replace that with something so if you get two 2.5mm um, bolt on each side, um, two 2.5mm bolts to secure the rotor on there. And now you're ready to add the modified serverless retract mechanism. The first thing you should do is drill, drill two 3mm holes there and there. They're spaced exactly the same distance apart as the inner bolts for the bolts for the rotor arm um, cups that hold the rotor arm when it's folded. So that's the, there and there. And in fact, they, those holes are 40 millimeters apart. We now take four spacers, four threaded spacers, 30 millimeters long, and they need to be secured in these holes, the two holes either side, and I'll just do that for you now. I'm just doing the last one now. Don't forget to use thread lock. You don't want the landing gear falling off when you're in mid-air. So I put a little three millimeter bolt through the pre-drilled hole and I attach the 30 millimeter spacer, the 30 millimeter spacer there. So we've got spacers for both sets of undercarriage now. The next thing we do is get one of the serverless retract mechanisms. Now if you made this plate in the way that I showed you how to do it, then it's adjustable. The angle of this grip here is adjustable. So just loosen off these four bolts, uh, which I've already done, and you'll see that the angle is adjustable. Right? And the next thing we do is just clip that on to the rotor arm. Bang. Now I slide it up the rotor arm until these two holes there and there exactly line up with the spacers. So I'm moving it up like that. Now you can adjust it because this clamp is adjustable so that the holes meet up exactly on the spaces without any tension. Now we get a washer and a three millimeter bolt and forget the thread lock and we bolt that in. Now we do that for both mechanisms and four three millimeter bolts. 
There you are, I've done one of them. And there you see that's fixed the mechanism onto the uh, airframe and it's at a slight angle facing downwards so that when the retract mechanism opens hopefully the legs will be splayed slightly outwards. Now you make the landing gear legs as per the manual and you find that they've got these red terminators on the end you can take that off and throw it away and you'll find that that leaves you very conveniently with two little holes either side so the next thing we do is slide the the next thing we do is slide the un undercarriage legs onto the servo mechanism just do this one first okay we push the landing gear legs on to the dowel they're nice and tight it's very strong not that it needs to be too strong because you'll always be landing lightly won't you it is very strong the last thing you need to do is locate the two holes in each of these legs and um, drill a little pilot hole with your Dremel and put a self tapping screw on to hold it and there you are you have your retractable landing gear for your hexacopter this is how it works I've just connected them up to a uh, servo tester And there we go. The last thing you need to do is tighten up all the uh, the bolts. There, there, and especially on these two brackets. And you find that the whole thing is very, very sturdy. Um, and thank you for watching my video.